other non idealities of the laser we need to worry about because these are all what would matter in a communication system. Because the other day we talked about Shannon's theorem where we said that finally uh, the capacity of the system is decided by the signal to noise ratio of the receiver. And signal to noise ratio of the receiver has multiple different contributions. The noise at the transmitter, the noise in the channel and the noise in the receiver. So, before we move on to the channel, we have to understand what are the sources of noise in the transmitter. Right? So, this will all build up in the final SNR of the system. Okay? So, um, the question we start asking is, you know, what is noise? Now, noise is nothing but any uh, unwanted uh, signal, true. Um, so, it is the, um, you say it is noise when it is random. Okay. It is unpredictable, it is random. Okay. So, random fluctuations of the output parameter. Now, I carefully said output parameter because it is not just the power we are going to talk about. If you say this is the output of a, a laser, uh, which has, uh, mm, so this is an ideal monochromatic source. I have not said that there is any frequency spread here. So, ideal monochromatic source. Uh, there is a square root of P of t, which is telling you the amplitude. And then there is uh, omega c, which is your carrier frequency. And then there is a phase, which could be a function of time. Okay. Now, if you have power changing with time, uh, that leads to what is called as intensity noise. Even though we are be using the word intensity noise, we represent it as power because we say power and intensity are proportional to each other. Okay. Uh, traditionally, it has been called as intensity noise of the laser. Probably because you know the detector, finally the, de the detector response is decided by the intensity. So, when you are measuring this, intensity comes into picture. Okay. And uh, a simple model for that is you say that my actual power that comes out of the laser, let us say I operate under the CW condition, I do not have any modulation. Okay. Um, you have time, you have power and if I uh, use a accurate enough or a sensitive enough power meter, a power meter which has a very good least count, what you will see is Ideally, if I just have power, if it is a continuous wave laser, if it is a noise free laser, what should I see? And I assume my detector is ideal, detector is not adding any noise right now. Okay? But later on in the link, we will talk about non idealities of the detector also. So, how is this supposed to look like? I have a continuous wave laser, I have no modulation, no noise, then it should look like a straight line. A horizontal straight line. Okay, should keep. But what does non-ideality here uh, result in? There is a delta p of t, which means that at every instant, the power at the output of the laser, if I log with a power meter, it's going to look like this. Okay, and. Uh, Relative intensity noise, RIN means relative intensity noise. Because I am always interested to find out how much is the variation with respect to the average. Okay. So, RIN of a laser means it is defined as delta of P t by P bar. This is relative intensity noise of the laser. But it is not quantified this way because this delta p of t is a function that is changing with time. Okay, so, we will talk about how to quantify this ring, but uh, this is what the ring of the laser means. So, that is what is happening in the intensity. Now, what other quantities can change with time? I could have phase changing with time. So, the next noise is the phase noise of the laser. Now, the phase noise of the laser means phi of t of the monochromatic emission ideally should have been some phi naught constant phase, which could be a 0 for if you are taking this phase as a reference phase. But what it means is that it is not a constant phase, it is changing as a function of time. There is a delta phi. 
and that delta phi keeps changing as a function of time. Just like how you had power changing as a function of time, phase also could change as a function of time and that is your phase noise. Can I not have a frequency noise? In fact, phase noise actually leads to a frequency noise because instantaneous frequency is d phi by dt and d phi by dt is, so this is your instantaneous phase phi is phi of sorry phi is omega c t plus phi of t. This is my instantaneous phase of the laser or oh, I should say something else because uh, let us say phi prime let me call this as phi prime whereas the instantaneous phase it, it includes both, both of these and instantaneous frequency is the first derivative of this and the first derivative of this is omega c plus d phi by dt. So, if your phase is not changing with time, I have my instantaneous frequency constant, there is no frequency noise, there is no phase noise. But my phi is not a constant as a function of time, phi keeps changing as a function of time, I will have phase noise and a consequence of phase noise is frequency noise. Okay. So, now we need to understand how to quantify intensity noise and phase noise of the laser. And what is the consequence of phase noise? In what domain will I represent? Intensity noise I represented in time domain, that is a natural way of representing. How do I represent phase noise in, in what domain? It is phase noise becomes, it is like a phase modulation now. So, what really is the consequence is a change in frequency. So, you would start representing phase noise in the frequency domain. Okay? You will start representing phase noise in the spectral domain. Okay? Now, the other interesting thing is, let us say, I have a laser and I managed to get zero phase noise. Ideal, some laser I did some magic and made my phase noise zero. But I am um, saying that I could not get rid of intensity noise. Okay? Is that a possibility? Can I have zero phase noise but intensity noise? Can I reduce all the intensity noise and then say that the phase noise is zero? Remember what is uh, chirp, what were the causes of chirp? Whenever there is a power fluctuation, what happens? The, refract the carrier density, you see carrier density and photon density are coupled equations. So, whenever there is a power fluctuation in the system, there is a photon density uh, or rather whenever there is a power fluctuation in the system, there is a photon density fluctuation and whenever there is a photon density fluctuation, my carrier density oscillates. Whenever there is a carrier density oscillates oscillation, then I will have change in refractive index and whenever there is a change in refractive index, there is a change in phase. Okay. So, what is interesting, this happens in a semiconductor laser again. We are talking only about semiconductor lasers because that is what is useful in a communication system. Okay. So, what is interesting is intensity noise also will get converted to phase noise in a semiconductor laser. So, when you are actually measuring a phase noise from a semiconductor laser, you are also measuring the consequence of intensity noise being converted to phase noise because you cannot isolate the two. You cannot say that this phase noise came because the phase actually fluctuated and this phase noise came because power fluctuated and so my phase fluctuated. So, when you make a measurement of the phase noise, you are also considering this effect. Okay? So, both are bad because whenever there is phase modulation, phase noise, the frequency spreads that is bad even in intensity modulated system and intensity noise is also bad because if I just have an on off key and if the intensity noise is very large, I will have problem in my uh, demodulation. Okay? Both are bad. Next is how do you quantify these two? Right. Uh, given a laser, what do I look at the data sheet right? and how do I quantify what is relevant for a communication system. So, the, so let us start with the intensity noise and it turns out that you know if you look at the cause of intensity noise, why is there an intensity noise? So, intensity noise is because there is some spontaneous emission in the system always which we said we are going to ignore when we wrote down the power equation, we never took care of the spontaneous emission. We said the spontaneous emission is very, very small when compared to stimulated emission. But that very, very small spontaneous emission also is, uh, is actually noisy with respect to the same stimulated emission. So, that is one reason. 
uh, then you could have carrier density fluctuations in the system because a drive current will have noise. So, there may be carrier density fluctuations or maybe there are some temperature changes, environmental changes, right. So, all this will result in carrier density fluctuation which may result in intensity noise. So, we are not worried about too much about what causes, maybe it is up to the device physics folks to find out what exactly are the causes and try to minimize that, control that. But let us look at how to quantify that. So, the way it is quantified is, it quantifies the fluctuations in the output power and whenever you quantify fluctuations, changes, the way to do that is by uh, doing a RMS value, root mean square value. So, how does one go about doing this RMS value? You say that I make a measurement, I am repeating the plot that I did earlier and ideally it is supposed to have p average, this p average is the same as p bar, let us not keep changing notations here, this is just same as p bar, this is p bar which is average and but actually if I make a measurement I have something that is hovering around something like this, okay. So, what I do is I find out the root mean square value, how do I find the root mean square value? I have a certain time of observation, I decide what is the time of observation and then p of t minus p bar. So, at every observation I find out what is the actual power minus the average power uh, square of that and mean of that and square root of that, that is your RMS value. So, this is one way of calculating um, RMS power, okay. And if I know what this delta p RMS is, I can calculate delta p RMS divided by p bar and this gives me my uh, relative intensity noise, RMS RIN, okay. So, RMS RIN is delta p RMS which I calculated as the square root of the mean of the, so this, this, this angle bracket here indicates just indicating the mean of the squares of the deviation. Um, this is how I can quantify. Let us say you are doing an experiment, okay. You are trying to find the ring of the laser. You take the laser diode and the output of that laser diode, you put it on a uh, photo detector, okay. And then you connect it to an oscilloscope and get this oscilloscope trace. Is there any information that you are missing? The laser let us say is having some fluctuations, okay. And let us say my oscilloscope has a very limited bandwidth. My photodiode has a very limited bandwidth. It has let us say 1 kilohertz bandwidth. What would be the consequence of that? I will get only fluctuations which are within the 1 kilohertz bandwidth, okay. So, if I were to actually measure the relative intensity noise of the laser, I should use a measurement device which is of infinite bandwidth, only then I can capture uh, everything. But if I have a measurement device of uh, infinite bandwidth, I mean all the fluctuations I am capturing, so my sampling, if it is a storage oscilloscope, my sampling frequency is very large and I sample it. Uh, let us say 1 gigahertz sampling frequency or 100, the best sampling frequency that I can have. It means that I cannot look at it for a long time because practically in a digital oscilloscope, if your sampling frequency is very large, it means you have large number of samples, you have to store large number of samples, you will get limited by the memory which means that if I go for very fine sampling frequency, I am limited by the duration of capture. So, what if I get limited by the duration of the capture? What am I missing if I am limited by the duration of capture? If there are very slow fluctuations in the system, I am missing that, okay. So, Calculation of this delta p RMS by p bar, we should understand that it is limited by the measurement bandwidth and the memory of my measurement device. 
So, there must be a better way of representing this. Okay. So, I will just summarize what we said. The fluctuations could actually be slow or fast. I could have slow fluctuations, I could have fast fluctuations in the laser. And the registered fluctuations that you are registered as in registered in an experiment would be uh, dependent on the measurement bandwidth. Fast fluctuations may not be detected by a slow detector. Slow fluctuations are, can, could get missed because of the limited measurement time. Let us say the there are fluctuations which whose frequency is one day okay, or you free, whose frequency is 4 hours let us say. You may miss that. But in a communication system is running for 24 hours, 365 days. So, you should actually have an idea of all the frequencies in your fluctuations. So, what is required is not the time domain. What is desirable is the frequency domain picture of this noise. Time domain picture will tell us an idea of okay, there is 1 percent fluctuation, there is 2 percent fluctuation. That is what this number will tell you. But what is also important for you is to understand that what is the power spectral density of these fluctuations. There, are, there is noise, is that noise fast or is it very slow variation. Okay? So, you need to figure out that and if you go back to your uh, basic signals and systems uh, ideas, what is the easiest way of finding the power spectral density of a function? Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. Okay.